Hi everyone, I'm Sarah uh, from Protocol Labs. Today I'm going to present our paper, Decentralization Conscious Players and System Reliability, that is joint work with Alexander Hicks from University College London. So first, let me motivate the idea behind the paper. So rationality in decentralized cryptocurrency has been well studied. And specifically, there has been a lot of attacks um, on the instances system of this cryptocurrency that has been found. Um, one very well known is selfish mining. It has been studied and then refined and um, uh, basically, it's, it's really well known, really well studied. Um, but yet, there, there is no really evidence that um, this attack or let's say strategy is being used in practice. And one idea that, um, that some people, you know, or like that could be advanced is that the miner, they could prefer short term, they could, sorry, not prefer short term profits versus um, the long term profits that they will get if uh, they have a healthy decentralized cryptocurrency. So basically attacking the system, like using selfish mining, um, it hurts the the system right because we have more stale blocks um this is kind of detectable so it's really not a sign of a healthy system and a lot of miners actually they benefit from having a system that is healthy because that's when people participate and um and really they don't want the system to to die out so there is really this idea of short-term profit versus long-term profit Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, however, so most of the models uh, that we have today, they don't really incorporate this uh, long term profit um, the, in the utility function, only consider um, like the reward that that you get and with, without thinking of the, the goal of having a healthy system. So basically, this is what our paper um, is trying to tackle, at least to some extent. Um, so we propose a game theoretic model of reliability for decentralized systems. So basically, we introduce decentralization conscious players. So these are players that care about the decentralization of the system. So they want a healthy system. They want a system that is decentralized. Um, and then we, we study this and we see what this tells us about decentralization. So first, um, let's start by defining what decentralization means. So this, what decentralization means is that, you know, we should not have one person that is in charge of processing uh, and maintaining the system. We should have like many, many nodes. And also something to note is that we don't want to have one node that has a disproportionate amount of power in the system. So that's, um, that's kind of like an agreed uh, um, definition of decentralization. Um, and so now what we're going to do is like we're going to study decentralization as a social goal. And so we're going to assume decentralization conscious players who care about decentralization. So they want to have a system where there are many participants and where no participants has more power than the other, or at least not in a completely dis disproportionate way. So in order to do that, we're going to use system reliability. So system reliability, roughly, it captures the likelihood of a system um, performing as intending. So basically, it said that this system is likely to, to work well. Um, and in public good, this is going to depend on the effort that players put into the system. So this was first introduced by um, Varian uh, when he studied system reliability and free writing. And free writing. So in his paper, Varian considered three different cases. One of them is uh, the weakest link. So in the weakest link case, the reliability of the system will depend on the player that puts, that puts in the least amount of effort. The best shot case, um, in this case, the reliability will depend on the player that puts the most effort. And finally, the total effort case, that will be um, a system where the reliability depends on the sum of the efforts uh, that, at, that are put in by all the players. Okay, 
Um, so now, what about system reliability and uh, decentralization? So as I said, um, in this case, in the case of a decentralized system, then the reliability of the system is going to depend on its decentralization. So what it means is that we want to have a lot of players, right? We want to have, uh, so it's kind of like the total effort that I've just mentioned with Varian. So basically having um, more people will be good, will increase the uh, reliability of the system. But however, um, so that's good. But what we don't want, on the other hand, is having one participant that uh, contributes like disproportion disproportionality in this, whatever. Um, so yes, yeah, so we want to, so, so that's the goal that we have in mind. We want a lot of players, with, but we want them to have like, similar contributions. Um, and that's why uh, we introduced the normalized total effort. So this is unlike the total effort of variance, where the reliability of the system depends on the sum of the efforts. But here we also normalize this by the biggest contribution. So let me show you the mathema mathematical details. Um, so here, you, so we, we consider each player's efforts, which are noted X in this slide, their cost, because, you know, putting an effort has a cost. So that's C and then the valuation of the system. So that's how much they want the system to work. Um, so basically the normalized total effort then is the sum of the effort. So that's like the total effort. And then we normalize it by the maximum um, effort put by any player. So in this, um, in this way, even if we have a system with a lot of players, but where one players contribute like 90% of the, of the total, of the total effort, then this is not really like a decentralized system, even if we have a lot of players. So that's really what we are trying to capture here. And then uh, the so the expected utility of the player is um, is defined as as expected. So again, here p of f is the likelihood that the system functions. So basically, the the utility that you get is like your valuation times the likelihood that the system functions. And of course, you need to remove your cost, and your cost depends on your effort. And finally, we also define the social payoff, which is the sum of the utility of all uh, the players. Okay, so what we do next is that we study um, what are the equilibrium of uh, the game that we've just uh, that we've have just introduced. So there are two types of equilibria. The first one is the one value equilibrium. So in this case, players contribute the same amount. Uh, so either they contribute the same amount or if they can't because they have a, a cost that is too high, then they contribute zero. But basically um, for the contributing players, so the people who are contributing a strictly positive value, then they will all be contributing the same. So that's the one value equilibrium. And we see that this equilibrium is quite intuitive, right? Because that's the way we defined our game. We defined our game such that the uh, player value decentralization, so value uh, a situation where everyone contributes the same. So, so it makes sense that we have this equilibrium. It's not a big surprise. Um, and then uh, obviously the value depends on the parameters of the game, such as the benefit cost ratio. Also we made in a paper, some simulation about how um, easy it is for people to, to change their effort, how fast uh, they, they can change their contribution. So I'll, I'll uh, refer you to the paper for this. Now we have um, also found that there is a second equilibrium that exists in this game. And this one is maybe a bit more surprising or unexpected. And this is an equilibrium where um, two value are played by contributing players at the, at the equilibrium. So we will have the bulk of the player that will be uh, playing the same value, but then we will have some uh, players that can also play like a second value. And then obviously those, um, who will contribute zero because their cost is too high and value too low or value too low. So that's, that's another equilibrium. 
Um, so here in the previous analysis, we have only considered um, the valuation of the system, right? So that's how much um, people, you know, appreciate the fact that there is a system working. However, uh, what happened in the previous um, equilibrium that I've mentioned is like um, is that we have like a trivial uh, zero equilibrium where basically contributing zero is an equilibrium because, well, obviously it's decentralized. No, I mean, everyone contributes the same, right? Zero. Um, and so what many systems have these days is that they add an explicit financial reward. So um, usually this will be a reward that is proportional to your effort. So again, thinking about uh, cryptocurrencies, we have the mining reward, right? For every block that you mine, you get some coins. And here, I just want to emphasize quickly that like this explicit reward is different um, than to the valuation that I've mentioned before. So if you think about it, the valuation is like how much I value the system, like how much I benefit from having. So, for example, if you think about cryptocurrency of having a decentralized financial system, right? Um, so that's that's different from the financial explicit reward that is um, the, the bitcoins or whatever coins mined or minted in each block. Uh, so what we find where we, when we add this, um, this explicit reward is that the equilibrium are quite, um, similar, except that we don't have this, um, zero uh, equilibria because if you earn a reward then you're always going to have like an incentive to to contribute even if no one else is contributing which isn't the case in the this in the purely decentralized uh, game where you know if no one else is contributing then you don't want to be the first one to contribute because then it's not going to be decentralized you're going to be the, the the only one right okay um next we also study the social optimum so, um, so, uh, so obviously, because we consider a decentralized system as public good, then the social uh, payoff is important. And um, especially in the case of the variance paper that I have mentioned previously, the equilibria and the social optima were not the same which is problematic, right? Because um, ideally you want the social optima to be the equilibrium. And just to remind ourselves, the social optima is what is gonna optimize, maximize the, the social payoff, which is the, which is the sum of the utility of each player. So really what is gonna increase, uh, uh, optimize what everyone gets out of, out of the system. Um, so in our case, with decentralization uh, conscious player, uh, we found that social optimer, optimum as players contributing the smallest non-zero amount possible. So if you think about it, uh, players want to have a decentralized system, so they want to have as many people contribute and contribute the same, but at the same time, they have a cost, so it benefits them if... Um, if you know they contribute the sm smallest amount possible, such as there is a system and it is decentralized, but um, but with um, but but without spending too much, so that's that that makes sense. And uh, the good news is that actually this can this is a Nash equilibrium in our case, so that that's actually a nice nice result. Um, so then in the paper, we also study the robustness to other type of uh, other types of players we, because we know that in reality, we don't only have rational player. Uh, so what we consider in the paper is um, what happens if a player deviates from their equilibrium for no apparent reason, they are, you know, they are not rational. Um, so what happens if they increase or decrease their contribution? And we find that in, in, in some cases, distribute the equilibrium, but not always. We also study what happens when a new player joins the system or when a, a, syst a player leaves the system. And same, we find that um, that uh, there are there are many cases where the equilibrium is not is not disturbed. So again, I will invite you to check the paper if you want to have the details of in which case the equilibrium is um, disturbed or not. But generally, it's nice to see that the equilibrium is quite stable. So it's not always disrupted by a disruption in the system. 
Um, okay, so here are a few here are a few results. So um, basically, a new player joining the system uh, disturbs the equilibrium only if their benefit cost ratio is high enough relate relative to the existing players and the current equilibrium value. Um, so then in this case, this can lead to a new equilibrium with a different equilibrium value. So one, one highlight here. Um, however, a higher value might force players to free ride. Now, what happens when a player deviates from the equilibrium? So an existing player that deviates from the equilibrium causes a change of equilibrium if they contribute more than the equilibrium value. Uh, so decentralization conscious players will try to match this contribution, increasing the equilibrium value. And those that cannot match the new equilibrium value switch to free riding. So another thing that uh, we consider are non-myopic players. So non-myopic players take into account the effects that their actions will have on the other players. So for example, let's say you are in a Nash equilibrium, right? Well, you have no reason to change your contribution because given you know, the contribution of other player, this is your best contribution by definition of a Nash equilibrium. But in the case of non-myopic non players, what they are going to do is they're going to change their contribution, hoping that other people may follow them, basically, may also change their contribution, maybe because also they are non-myopic. Um, so that's, so that, so that's a, a, an, inter an interesting uh, concept. Um, so basically, um, uh, so in in our case, it can be um, it can be rational to deviate from the from your equilibrium value um, only if it leads to a to a new type of um, of equilibrium of equilibrium where you benefit more. And uh, the thing is that when you add a reward to uh, to our system, then this can happen because uh, rewards are proportional to your effort. So if you, for example, increase your value, the effort that you contribute, you're going to be forcing other players to leave the system because then it will not be beneficial for them to contribute anymore. And then you'll be able to get a bigger reward. So in this case, we have kind of like this, like not perverse, but, but slightly perverse effect where actually uh, with an added explicit reward, you could, you could have case uh, where, where a player is incentivized to deviate, uh, a non-myopic player is incentivized to deviate from the equilibrium. Okay, so uh, what, what about decentralization conscious players in practice? So in practice, they can maintain um, decentralization, but they cannot increase it, right? If you want to, because if you want to, um, you cannot force any any people to 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 join the protocol, and also you you know they may want to increase the contribution to increase the total effort put in the in the system. But again, in the decentralized system, well, when you want to have everyone contribute the same, then that's 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 not really like. A, um, that doesn't really make sense in this case. Um, so in the paper, we also discuss some uh, practical limitation. So that's the scarcity of resources required to, to, to contribute, the information about uh, other players. So we know that in practice, it's not uh, always possible to contribute as much as you want. For example, if you think about the specific case of proof of stake system, well, there is only a limited amount of coins. And if there is someone that possesses, you know, some amount of, of coin, they may not sell it to other. So actually, you may not be able to contribute as much as you want in a proof of stake system. And in the proof of work system, this is less true, but this is true to the extent where um, ASIC's hardware is uh, limited, right? There have been in the past some issues with um, with the, 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 um, with the supply chain. Okay. So 
To conclude now, decentralization conscious players are a rational alternative to honest players who can help maintain decentralization even if there are disruptions. So basically, um, we could kind of argue that we don't have to assume honest player, but we could instead of this um, assume that players are rational, just that their incentives also include the well-being of the system, uh, and this could even be for uh, their long-term profits. Um, so security is uh, both like total effort and decentralization, and increasing both is hard because, again, if you increase your contribution, you may uh, uh, decrease decentralization. And um, so that's, that's, that's tricky. Um, and so, yeah, I think there are a lot of future work possible uh, to deal with the practical issues and to maybe try to integrate this model with ex existing work on distributed system. So, so there's a, um, yes, a lot of um, future work possible. If you are interested, you have our um, details, contact details here. Feel free to email us and, and we'll, be, we'll be happy to discuss it. Thank you.